Okay, now that we've learned a little bit about uh, random variables, we can uh, do some other operations on these random variables to compute moments and expectations. So let's look at a few slides to uh, understand those concepts. So first, let's talk about moments of random variables. And I would say we can rename these things or describe these moments as, as summary values for the random variable. So while the probability density function or the cumulative distribution function for a random variable tells us a complete description of that random variable, the probabilities associated with uh, any set of outcomes that we would be interested in for those random variables, these moments give us some sort of partial summary of the properties of that random variable. And the, by far the most common moments that we look at are the mean and the variance. So let's take a look at those. So the mean of a random variable, uh, a lot of times we'll denote that with mu, and then we'll use the subscript to indicate which random variable ta we're talking about. So the, the mean value of the random variable x is defined as the probability density function for x multiplied by the value of x and then integrated over all values that x could take. And if we look at this um, kind of from a pure geometric perspective, this is giving us the centroid of the probability density function. That's the, uh, um, the what this uh, integral is computing. So, and uh, so it's giving us kind of a, what's a typical value that this random variable would take. On average, what's the numerical value that it's going to take? Uh, there's other um, popular measures of typical values of the random variable, in particular the median of the random variable, which is a, the value that's exceeded uh, with 50% probability, and the mode of the random variable, which is the, the value of that random variable that has the highest probability density or the highest probability mass. Um, okay, and then the variance of a random variable, um, again, we'll, these are the formulas for the continuous random variables. Um, there's comparable formulas for discrete random variables that are easy to look up. But this one is going to compute the probability density function for x multiplied by x minus the mean value of x squared, and then again integrated over all x. And if we uh, look at that from a geometric perspective, that's the moment of inertia of x uh, as computed relative to its mean value. And so what that's giving us a sense of is kind of a large moment of inertia of the probability density function is indicating that there's a lot of probability density far away from the mean. And so a large variance is indicating that there's a large range of values that this random variable could take. So it's a measure of scatter uh, in the values that a random variable takes. Um, there's also other ways to look at this variability. Um, so we can compute the standard deviation of x. So we'll denote that sigma subscript x, similar to the sigma subscript x squared that we use for the variance. And this is simply the square root of the variance. Okay. And that's popular um, because this, this variance computation, if we look up at the integral, we have a x squared in the integral, and then the probability density is unitless. So the variance is going to have units of the random variable squared. The standard deviation is just going to have directly units of the random variable. So that's kind of a nice uh, feature about the standard deviation that makes it easily interpretable. Uh, kind of what's the scatter in units of the variable you're measuring. And then a coefficient of variation is another s small manipulation. So we'll indicate that with Greek letter delta subscript x. And that's the standard deviation of x divided by the mean value of x. So both the numerator and the denominator have units of x. So this is a unitless measure to say how large is the standard deviation relative to the mean value of x. Um, so I can say the standard deviation is 10% of the mean value. That would indicate a coefficient of variation of 0.1. This is obviously not very uh, informative if the mean value of x is 0. That's not an operation we can do, but for especially for random variables that are strictly positive valued, that's also another nice way to compute vari or to summarize variability of a random variable. Okay, and then another um, so, so these variable these uh, moments are nice descriptors of a random variable. A lot of times they're also going to relate to the parameters in a probability density function or a cumulative distribution function. So we can take for example this uh, type one largest distribution. Here's the the PDF and the CDF for that random variable. Um, we see that there's, if, if, we, if we'll, the random variable is called y, we can see y is floating around in here, but then we have these alpha and u parameters, um, and those are parameters that specify kind of the location and the shape of the distribution. And it's very easy to relate those u and alpha parameters to the mean value and the standard deviation of the random variable itself. And so if we know a mean value and standard deviation, and we know a distribution type, we can uh, compute uh, parameters of that distribution. And if we're estimating the mean and standard deviation of uh, of, of data and using that to fit a distribution, that's exactly the method of moments, is, is taking the moments that we estimate from data and converting those to the appropriate parameters for a distribution. So that's another way in which we use moments of random variables. 
Okay, now let's generalize things a little bit. Um, so there's a more general operation called the expectation operation, and the mean and variance we just computed are, are just simple special cases of that. So the general definition is if I want to take the expectation of h of x, which is just some function of x, any function we want, The, the, the expectation, so we're going to denote expectation with capital E, and we'll put that function h of x in here, is defined as the function h of x multiplied by the probability density function for x, again integrated over all x. All right, and then so we've basically just looked at a couple special cases, right? So the mean value is a special case where the function h of x is just equal to x, right? So the expectation of just the function x using that formula above would be x times the probability density function for x dx, and that's just this mean value of x that we uh, computed a couple slides ago. Similarly, the variance is going to be the case where the h of x function is equal to x minus the mean value of x squared. Um, so those are two, you know, two functions that are commonly used to compute those moments, but we can plug in any other function we want as well. All right, let's take the, uh, um, the moment calculation a little further. If we want to look at multiple random variables, uh, the most common uh, expectation we're going to take is this joint moment called the covariance. And so we're going to choose the function h. Now, if we've got two random variables, h of x, y, we're going to compute the function x minus the mean value of x times y minus the mean value of y. That'll be the function we choose. So we'll compute expectation of x minus the mean of x, y minus the mean of y, and then so we'll just plug in that function. There's the h of x, y. We're going to use the joint probability density function now for two random variables instead of the, the marginal density function for one variable. Now we'll integrate over all x and all y, and we get this covariance, and then we're going to denote that sigma subscript x and y to indicate a covariance. And so what that's measuring is it's going to give us a measure of the linear dependence between these two random variables. So if x and y are um, uh, highly linearly dependent, this covariance will be large. Uh, if the x and y have no linear dependence between them, then this covariance will be zero. All right, you may recognize this in a more uh, in a normalized version, which is very popular, the correlation coefficient. So this is rho x, y is going to indicate a correlation coefficient. And it's equal to this covariance from the equation above divided by the standard deviation of x and divided by the standard deviation of y, that makes it unitless, right? This, this covariance has units of x times y. So if we divide by terms with units of x and units of y, we end up with this unitless um, correlation coefficient, and it's going to take values between negative 1 and positive 1. So a negative 1 would indicate a perfect negative linear dependence, a 1 would indicate a perfect positive linear dependence, and a zero would indicate no linear dependence. Note that that doesn't indicate that x and y are in independent, it just means that there's no linear dependence between them. Okay, so that's a very quick look at expectations and moments, which are some uh, frequently used operations to uh, study properties of random variables.